Welcome biologists and in today's session we're going to be looking at specification point B from patterns of inheritance. Now this is quite a big specification point so today we're just going to be focusing in on this monogenetic inheritance. So mono means one and in this particular instance we're looking at one gene and the inheritance of one particular gene. So what we're looking at here is some seeds and the in particular peas actually. So we're looking to see here if I can what I will get from the cross of a homozygous dominant round pea plant and also a homozygous recessive wrinkled individual. So the parental phenotypes here are going to be round and wrinkled. Now in an exam this is what they are looking for. So I've got the genotype here at the top um, what I would then need to do is identify the gametes that are present. So the gametes obviously like in, in this case of a plant, it would be the eggs and also the pollen. Um, so the gametes produced here, from this individual here, I can only get a large R gamete. So there we are for that individual. From this individual here, the wrinkled individual, I'm only going to get a small R. That's the only gamete that I could get. Um, now, the genotype of my F1 generation would be determined from doing a Punnett square. But just to show you where I'm going to get all these from, um, you could also work it out like this. However, you're not going to get my afternoon's exam for showing it this way. Um, now, as you can see, all my individuals here, all the offspring would have a big R and a small R. And because the big R, which codes for round, is dominant over the small R, it means all the individuals here are going to be round. Um, okay, so if I did the cross in a Punnett square, which is what you get marks for in your exam for showing this, so I'd be doing the big R and then the small R, and then again the same for this one, big R and small R, and the same for the bottom two. So again, as you can see here, I'm just doing this cross and I'm finding that all individuals here have got a big R and a small R, so therefore I have a 100% round offspring of my F1 generation. Now quite often, so I've covered all those points there, now quite often what they ask you to do is then cross two individuals from your F1 generation to create an F2 generation. So my parental genotypes would be a big R and small R each, they'd both be round individuals, the gametes produced by each are a big R and a small R each, and I put them into my Punnett square to do my cross, so I've got a big R, a big R together, I've got a round individual there, a big R and a small R here. Again, another round individual. You'd put these are heterozygous now. Another heterozygous individual here, but again, still round. And then I've got a homozygous recessive. So this individual here would be wrinkled. So my phenotypes here for my offspring, I've got a round, round and a wrinkled one. So this means that my F2 generation ratio is going to give me a three to one phenotypic ratio, whereby I have three round to one wrinkled. It's really important you say what the numbers are representing as well, not just given a three to one, but you're actually saying which, which is three and which phenotype is the one. Um, if I was looking at a genotypic ratio, however, it'd be a one to two to one. Now, a genotypic ratio is very rarely asked for in an exam. It's normally always the phenotypic ratio. Now, phenotype is how the offspring appears to be. So in this case, round or wrinkled. A genotypic ratio is more to do with the actual letters involved, so the actual genes involved and the alleles involved there. So that's monogenetic inheritance. In the next video, we'll look at dihybrid inheritance. So monogenetic is one gene and dihybrid is two genes, looking at the crossing of two genes in particular. So guys, in your exam, please remember uh, that box that we need to have. We need to include all of those bits of information here in each of your exam questions. So please make sure you've got those in each of your exam questions to access all the marks. So even if you get the wrong ratio at the end, if you've done all of these points here, you may pick up marks for you working out. So please, please, please make sure you include that and good luck with your exams.